Hi guys, how are you? This is Weiwei. As many of you know, I travel all over the world and meet always amazing people, incredible leaders, politicians, activists, entrepreneurs in different countries. So I thought it would be really interesting to hear from them directly as well. That's why I decided to talk with some of the leaders that I meet. Today, we have Kirsten Bosbol from Denmark. Kirsten was a 14 years of politicians in Danish parliament and she was a minister as a very young politi politician. So today we're gonna talk about her political life, her visions, her motivations, and her commitment to the world. So Kirsten, thank you very much for talking with me today. So the first question that Kirsten, I wanted to ask you is that you are just 27 years old when you become a parliamentarian. And tell us about what was your decision behind uh, to be a politician and what are the steps that you have taken to become a politician? Yeah, so thank you very much for having this discussion with me. I'm very excited to share with you some of that experience. Um, so first of all, I think it's important to say that I don't come from a family of politicians. So it's not like I was born into a dynasty, you know, some families, it's like generation after generation, yeah. you pass on. And that was not the case for me. I mean, my family has been politically active, yeah. but never in parliament. Yeah. So for me, it was like um, uh, kind of an, an incremental yes. path. So I, yes. I, when I was in university, I was increasingly interested in politics. And I decided to... Uh, my, so my first encounter with my political party was actually as a student assistant to some of the MPs in the Danish parliament. So I was working as an assistant. And then I, I went to Brussels to work at the European Parliament, also as a political advisor. And then my, uh, the constituency where I grew up became available because the person who was there as a parliamentarian, he decided to step down. And then someone said, you know, would, would that be interesting for you to represent that area where you were born and grew up? And at the time, you know, I was young and I felt confident and I felt like, yeah, why not? I mean, I can, you know, definitely, you know, try. I don't have anything to lose. Uh, and what you have to do is that you enter a kind of primary election in yeah. that constituency. So you run against people from your own party. Yeah. And basically there were seven candidates that were running for that con constituency. And I won that in the first round. Wow. And yeah, I was amazed. It was like this is unreal and Congrats. then basically very short time after that few weeks after that the general election was called and i had to go in my campaign and after one and a half months i was elected as member of parliament so that was an incredibly fast track for me and i guess that's why i was also a little bit you know in a kind of shock when i when i arrived there because it was uh, it was it was such a fast process yeah, yeah. that was amazing so here we go you know you don't have to have a political background to become a politician mm -hmm. you can join the politics you know you don't need any background that's incredible and and you actually become a minister uh, in the Danish government so tell us about your journey to become uh, a minister and you know you, your achievement you were uh, part of you were actually a leader at the all party group on sustainable development goals and you know, tell us about your priorities in the in your politics. So once I entered Parliament, um, you know, you you work on a variety of issues. So I was a member of many different committees during my career in the fourteen years I was in Parliament. Um, but I guess when it really took off was when I was appointed minister back in 2014. Uh, at the time, I had been a member of parliament for nine years. So I had some experience in kind of the parliamentary work. Yeah. Uh, and then I was brought in as the minister of environment in the then uh, social democratic government of Denmark. And uh, the environment uh, at the time was becoming increasingly um, kind of top of mind of voters, right? So it was like something that, you know, now there is a broader consensus now that we need to do something about biodiversity crisis, yeah. climate change. It's like people realize that this is something that we need to take seriously. Yeah. So 
my agenda when I entered the the government on on environment was to be part of that movement and to strengthen that movement. Yeah. And some of the things that that I prioritized was the work around uh, biodiversity. So so that you could say the crisis of um, nature. You yeah. Know? being protecting our yeah. nature and the, and the values in our nature mm -hmm. so that's that's one of the things and then as you mentioned i also was part of the effort to work on the new set of global goals yeah. that was negotiated in the un at the time which right, right. which ended up being the sustain 17 sustainable development goals and uh, since then that has been my priority to yeah. make sure that now that the world has adopted this incredibly ambitious agenda for wow. sustainable development we have a responsibility to implement that and to make sure that it's also turned into actions yes i'm so proud and you have such a you know successful career as a politician but i'm sure you must have a lot of challenges as well as a young woman in the politics what are the most like you know difficult part of your career and what are some challenges that you have endured? Yeah, so I think um, Denmark, my country, when you look at it from the outside, many people say, oh, you're, you know, you have basically achieved gender equality because you have, you know, somewhat uh, critical mass of women in your parliament. We have around a little bit more than one third of women mm -hmm. in the parliament. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess it was not that unusual to be elected as a woman. Right. Uh, but I still believe, and this has there has been a lot of investigation into this, that women and men are measured by different standards. Yeah. When it comes to particularly their representation in the media and by the press. So there's a lot of focus always on how a woman appears, how she looks, how she dresses, how she talks, like the voice, and there are a lot of different standards to men and women in politics. Questions that I, as a woman, have to answer to that men are, would never be asked, right? So, for instance, when it comes to balancing family and, uh, and work life, you know, I was a minister with two very young children they were one and three when i was appointed minister so it was and, and i had to be away a lot because i it's a busy job right yeah so i had to rely a lot on on, on my family and especially of course my husband um so so there's a lot of things uh, when it comes down to kind of allowing women to pursue a career in politics that that you still have double standards exactly, right exactly. Uh, and so that is a challenge uh, for sure for women in politics yeah. i think everywhere in the world yeah, yeah yeah it's a sad truth that you know women in all fields actually face the double standard stereotype all these gender parities yeah. but you have definitely seems to overcome some of those or a lot of those what are the tips for other women leaders, you know, uh, from your experience? Yeah, so I think it's extremely important to look for mentors in your, if it's a political party, in an organization or in the sector you're working in. Look for people that you can trust and, and yeah. talk to about these very difficult things yeah. because you need someone that you know, will give you some kind of feeling yeah. that it's okay to have these exactly, thoughts, right? Exactly. And who can help you and maybe guide you a little bit and say, in my experience, you know, you can do this or you can do that. So keep your alliances <laughs> to, to, to your peers and to your mentors. And then I think the most important <laughs> decision that I made uh, in my in my career and in my life in general was the choice of my husband. Wow! Because <laughs> okay. you know, to for especially for women, you know, to have someone who believes in you, who supports you, and who will you know take over when when you have to be out there and engage with your community and and your and the press and the media and you become the minister and you're traveling a lot you need someone who will be there for you and who will allow for instance now my husband is back in denmark with yes. my children and yes. i get this amazing opportunity to be an obama scholar with way in new york and yes. that's just for me that has been the most important decision yeah choosing the right partner yeah. in your life is the most yeah. important <laughs> so kirsten you have really a successful career as a politician but you are still committed to sustainable development goals to have a safer peaceful world so tell us about your motivations behind working on the uh, sustainable development goals. 
You know, we are the last generation that can that can make sure that we achieve sustainability. Yeah. And we are also the first generation that really experience on our own bodies the consequences of climate change. Yeah. So we have an, a huge responsibility to also make sure that the nice words that have been written yeah. in the Sustainable Development Goals and the Agenda 2030 uh, are transformed into actions. Yeah. And, and this yeah. is what I have committed my time to, to doing and making sure that all the stakeholders that if you're a parliamentarian if you're a business leader if you're a civil society leader you should be uh, able to uh, have the tools to know how to implement uh, this uh, incredibly ambitious uh, structure around the sdgs because i believe it's a very very useful tool and it can help you think in a more holistic way about sustainability because you and i know that even though I'm, you know, I'm working in, in the environment and climate sphere, you're working very much with peace and, and justice and, and you know, leaving no one behind agenda. But it's all intertwined, you know, yeah. uh, the, the struggle that we have around peace and security uh, for, and respect for human lives will be much harder if we don't deal with climate exactly. change. And, and, you know, the, the people who are uh, mostly affected by climate change are the most vulnerable groups yeah. in our society. So, exactly. so it's, it's all connected. And that's why I think this is a very useful framework for us to have this conversation about how do we find the paths yes. to a more sustainable future that yeah. is more inclusive and that is more focused on the most vulnerable groups. Well, this is, it's incredible to hear from you you're not just only a great politician, you're a great leader. What do you think are the most important qualities for, uh, for the leaders in this day to have? Yes, yeah, so I think, you know, typically people would say, you know, a political leader is someone who is, um, you know, obsessed with power yeah. and who is very much leading by stick and carrot yeah. and like short term yeah. gains and yeah. and even personal gains for themselves yeah. Yeah, right yeah. for me what we need is the exact opposite yeah <laughs> we we need leaders who are there to serve their their the people that they represent you know obama tells us that to lead is to serve yeah and i have really taken note of that quote because I strongly believe that this yeah. is what we need we need leaders who are conscious about that leadership is serving their communities yeah. and that you cannot lead yeah. without listening and yeah. without including your community yeah. in decision making yeah. in um, in solutions uh, gener generating new solutions to local problems uh, to linking local uh, with the global and, and, and you need leaders who are conscious of that. Uh, so one sentence would be to lead is to serve and you can't serve without, you know, engaging with your community and making sure that everyone uh, feels that they are represented. You are. Yes, this is very, very valuable. And thank you very much, Kisten, for talking with me today. I hope we see each other again. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.